Well, hey there, friends, and welcome back to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I have a special guest for you today. My guest is Louise McManus. She's the owner of Visher Fairy General Store. She refers to it as a modern day general store, and her shop is located in an original 1856 general store building in the heart of a small Erie Canal hamlet. It's so cute, my friends. It's like amazing. It's what dreams are made of when you think of a beautiful modern day general store. So I just love Louise. Um, She actually put an extensive renovation into her shop. She opened the doors in 2015 and has become the go-to in her community as a gathering spot for her neighborhood. And you will see why we will have all the links to her shop. You're going to just love it to death. She has, uh, she's known for delicious breakfast sandwiches. They have a cafe in their shop, homemade scones, amazing staff. I know she has crazy awesome staff. And she also sells a carefully curated selection of unique gifts um, and, and home goods. It's just, her shop is just charming. You're going to have to go look at it. I am pleased to have Louise on here today. She first took the Retail Made Simple course uh, with me and is now a member of the Retailers Inner Circle. And she has had visions at the time uh, of her business being just a little bit different than it was when she first came to see me. And I have watched her grow and thrive and achieve that vision. And it is just exciting. So I had to have her on. I asked her to join me today so we could show you an example of what doing and donning the CEO work and the CEO hat and stepping like fully and leaning into that role, how you can build that business that you've always dreamed of. Louise is really inspiring um, in her very calm way, but exciting way. So Louise and her team have built a beautiful, beautiful, profitable business. Uh, She's seeing great success in lifestyle as well, not just profits and on the spreadsheets. I am so excited to have her here with you, with with us today. I'm so excited to have her here. Um, Louise has also built a business that I call Big Enough. I think she would probably agree with me as well in our, our conversation Uh, You'll hear a little story of, you know, when she called and she said to me one day, she's like, oh, I'm not, I'm not growing and thriving. I'm, I'm, I'm exactly where I want to be. And I'm so, that's exactly what we all want. We are growing and thriving if we are where we are exactly supposed to be. So that's big enough and success comes in all different sizes for us. And wait till you hear how she talks about how her business is being run now, what is happening in her business journey. And I know you're going to enjoy all of the conversations that we have. I will say as a coach and someone who has, again, seen her make these shifts and make the decisions and, you know, again, leaning into that CEO role, I am so, so happy for her. And I'm truthfully, I'm really happy for her community as well. I, as many of you know, I am a huge, huge believer that our shops matter in our in our community and if they if we fail or our shops fail our community will be at a loss and um, I believe that Louise has just done an amazing job for her community and it's been a pleasure a privilege and a pleasure to work with her and see all of this come together in such a beautiful way Um, I'd also I'd love to invite you at this time uh, before we jump into our conversation with Louise I'd love to let you know um, that Louise and other passionate and super committed shop owners that feel the same are inside the Retailers Inner Circle. That's my monthly coaching membership for established brick and mortar owners like Louise who want to refine their retail business. The Retailers Inner Circle has education, strategy. We have a wonderful community. So you don't have to go and do this all alone. We have an entire library filled with resources but more so we have a community that you can ask questions to I'm in there all the time it's really the easiest path I guess to access with me um, and to to have um, information shared and in a in a, with a really positive amazing group so we'd love to see you join us and if you join us this summer which I hope you will you'll also be able to take part in our annual holiday boot camp this is our fifth annual holiday boot camp and what we do in the boot camp is really get ourselves ready to see success for 
um, the rest of the year for what's coming in Q3 and Q4, especially with all of the changing climate that we're seeing all the time. The inner circle is open for enrollment right now, and you can learn more at wendybatten.com slash join over on my website. I would love and be honored and it would be a privilege to have you inside my uh, retailers inner circle with the amazing community that we are building in there. So I hope to see you in there. I really do. Okay, let's get on with our chat with Louise. You are going to love it. Get a notebook out. She has some wonderful nuggets. Let's go talk to Louise. Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. Each week, I'll share simple proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers and advice from industry experts. Together, we're gonna work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. So welcome, Louise, to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Wendy. I'm happy to be here. I invited Louise on because I am a big fan of how she is building her business, integrity and intentional growth, but not crazy growth. So I thought her journey might be something really uh, interesting for all of us to chat about and to hear about. And uh, Louise, do you want to tell us a little bit about, about your, your beautiful Bishop Perry General store, where you are, and how did you get there? How did this all come about? <laughs> Yeah, well, it really started with the building. Uh, we bought a, a house in this historic Erie Canal hamlet in upstate New York. And our house was actually the shopkeeper's house built in 1856. We have a plaque that says shopkeeper's house. And it was right next door to what was the original general store for this village. And at the time, it was a tack shop for horseback riders. And it was very run down in rough shape. Long story short, a few years into it, we bought the building with some partners, renovated the building, and then I opened up the general store. So it'll be seven years in December. And so it really came about less from me looking to start a business as much as me wanting to do something with this beautiful historic building in the middle of our town that had so much potential that it really wasn't meeting. So, so I kind of backed into it that way. Yeah. So there's this beautiful building um and we're like well, what can we do in there <laughs> so we, let's open a shop so it wasn't that you came into this with a retail degree no. and lots of you know <laughs> lots of plans and lots of like business life, yeah. Quite, yeah. Yeah. No, what, no. what was life what was business life before what did you what what, well, what, what experience did you bring in I have been working at a like a high-end uh, bridal boutique for the 10 years prior to getting this business started and that was another thing that I just kind of fell into. I was a jewelry designer. I started selling my jewelry in that bridal store. And then I started working there. And I did that for 10 years. I loved it. I really loved working with the brides and that customer service aspect of it. But as far as opening the general store, we more sort of brainstormed like what kind of business can we put into this building that will bring people in? If it had been up to me, I would have done just like some sort of a gift shop uh, but we knew that we needed to have a food aspect of it to get people in the door because we're not, we're very much out of the way. We're not near anything. We're the only business in our little area. There's nothing for like probably five or 10 miles. Um, we're just not near a business center. We don't get commuters. So we had to do something special that would get people to come to us. And we figured that had to be food in some respect. Okay. So let's tell, let's tell our listeners what is it now? What does the shop look like? So you have food. Let's we have food. What, what, are, what are you selling? What do you how are you making revenue? What is your shop all about? <laughs> let's let's talk about that. Okay. So well, we have a lot of different buckets. Learn that term from you, Wendy. Yes. <laughs> we are a cafe and a retail gift shop. So the cafe accounts for throughout most of the year, probably about 70% of our revenue. And then as we get into fourth quarter, it's probably more like. 50-50 retail and cafe. But in addition to those, we have a beautiful outdoor space that we have improved upon over the years. 
that we rent out for private events after hours. Uh, we also rent bikes. We, um, I should have made a list of all the buckets. At one point, I think I had 12 different buckets that I could name. We had like private classes, dinners, we do public events, um, all kinds of things like that. But for the most part, it is a small cafe serving breakfast and lunch and a retail gift store. Right. So for those who are listening, the buckets, and you may, if you're a new listener, <laughs> you're a new follower, what I mean by this, we all need multiple streams. And we talk about that a lot inside the Retailers Inner Circle, where Louise is a member. And we, I believe that we can do many things. And I, and I've watched Louise just do an incredible job at that I mean, you uh, re, uh, you took retail made simple. We, you took yes. the course retail made simple, and then into the inner circle. And we, I remember having conversations with you. It's like I've got this coffee shop, which many of you know. I have a lot of history on that as well. Mm -hmm. and I've got this gift shop. What? Do, how do we make it? You know, how do we bring? The, you have done an incredible job at creating a space for people to gather mm -hmm. in, like your back your backyard is it the backyard or the back of the shop <laughs> the, the, the whole atmosphere the experience you have created something from nothing like this middle of nowhere nothing that yeah. is crazy beautiful I love following along and I love I've been lo loving watching your journey so it's not it's no longer I would say an out of the way place I think it's a destination that you have created um, your tagline on your website I always laugh it says gather shop and eat and it's it's so perfect for what you <laughs> I have a funny story to tell Louise I haven't shared, but we have in the back of our little house, a little courtyard we were creating. We have a little um, shed sort of next to it and we have gravel and we were just building this last year. And a friend of mine who's an interior designer and decorator and lover of all things beautiful, uh, I had put out on Instagram, I said, I'm looking for your inspiration for courtyards. And she sent me yours, your oh backyard. My God. I was like, that's my, that's my clients back at the courtyard. It was so cute because it was one of your like just beautiful setups. So it's so oh, beautiful. Hilarious. Yeah, I thought it was so funny. I was like, wait, I know that courtyard. Why do I know that courtyard? So really you've done funny. a crazy job. So you have become the place to go in your community, in the whole area, right? You have people coming from yeah. afar. We do. We have people that drive half hour, 40 minutes who come literally every single weekend. Um, so it's funny because we have a mix of like regulars who come literally every weekend. Some people come every day. We're only open four days a week. So we're Thursday through Sunday because we're so far out of the way. We don't get business traffic. We don't get people on their lunch hour. Um, we've honed our hours over time. You know, we've tried all different hours and we're sort of, we've narrowed it down quite a bit because we felt like we do more business in four days than we were doing in six days. Yeah. Um, it's a weekend destination. So yeah, people will travel. They like the vibe. We, we have a unique sort of very friendly, welcoming. Our whole thing is like we're old fashioned. You want yes. to come someplace where you can unplug, slow down, meet with friends. Because now we're outside with our seating, we have so much space. I don't care if somebody comes for four hours. <laughs> In right. the beginning, they'd be taking up a space like inside, sipping mm -hmm. a cup of coffee for three, four hours. That was no good, you know, obviously, because we wanted to turn that space over for other customers. But uh, when the pandemic hit, we moved all of our seating outside and we've kept it outside. So that was kind of a silver lining for us. We never would have ever considered moving our cafe seating outside. We had a few tables outside, but now we can seat like 50 people out back, we don't see anybody inside. So I've got more room for retail and it's just been such a win-win and we can really let people spend, I don't care if they spend the whole day out there, it's, it's good for business. They keep coming back in and getting more lattes or ice cream or whatever it is. Yes, I, and it's funny, I remember the conversation we had at one point pre-pandemic about, you know, how do we, how do we, how do we be really friendly and tell you to get out? <laughs> <laughs> Not out, but you know, how do we move people along? I can, you know, and I do understand that, um, not dilemma it's, it's tension and friction or maybe a little bit, but it, you've done a great job about if you've gotten very efficient 
with your cafe because cafes can be very expensive. The margins are low for those who don't have cafes or have never done food service. The margins are a lot different than retail. So you've got your cafe, but you've worked really hard on your margins and your team and your efficiency and narrowed your, I know that you've narrowed your uh, menu down. Like you, you know, yes. you're trying to keep things simpler and more. So also you've also, so let's, well, let's talk about that first. That's taken you a lot of um, I've watched you really put that CEO hat on and step into that role. How have has that been for you? How do you find the time to do that? What's been the hardest part of stepping into that CEO role and making those kinds of decisions for your business? Um, I think as time has gone on, and I'm now, as I said, so like seven years in, I've gotten so much more comfortable in large part due to like learning all the things I've learned with you and all the classes and everything. But I think the biggest thing I've learned is to trust my instincts. Mm -hmm. So we used to have, as you mentioned, like a very broad menu with like six different sandwiches, a salad, several quiches, et cetera, et cetera. And with the food prices going up, I had to have so much labor to make all this food. It was just too much. And it also stressed me out because I don't like running a cafe. I like the retail. If I could just be a gift shop, I would. So after like around the holidays this year, right after Christmas that week, I said, why don't we try like get, getting rid of everything except for a breakfast sandwich, which is our most popular item. And we did that. We said, we're doing this like for the holidays. And then it went into our sort of quieter time right after the holidays. It gets a little quieter for everybody. We kept a more simple menu and we ended up never bringing back all of the sandwiches, which was my ultimate goal, but we had to sort of ease our customers into that. And we had a little pushback in the beginning, but I think I'm at the point where I'm confident in myself and my decisions. And I would just explain to customers, do you want us to be here and succeed as a business? Or, you know, like we did get a few complaints. So where's all the sandwich menu? But we said, well, this is our best seller. This is what we need to do to succeed as a business. Yep. And we have found that we are sell like our, re our cafe sales have not gone down at all, despite the fact that we have like two things on the menu as opposed to like 10 things on the menu. So that was a huge win for us to make that change, stick with it, stick to our guns yeah, and get people used to it, which they did. And I don't think we lost a single customer. I honestly think, you know, people maybe got annoyed, but then they got used to it. Well, like they in and yeah. With the seating, you know, the yeah. indoor seating, they were always like, are you bringing your indoor seating back? And I'd be like, maybe never. And now nobody even asks because it's been outside for three years now. Right. And, and it's, they're there for the experience, right? I mean, I mean, if we ask people, we, if we ask people, do you want, you know, pineapple upside down cake every day, they would say yes. And we'd be making pineapple, you know, if we were just doing what they, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like we can't mm -hmm. just, it has to be customer centric. We know that, but we have to do it with our CEO hat on and, and understand again. I love that. I love that you said, and that's a great takeaway for anybody listening. You know, do you want to be here? Do we want to be here? You know, five years from now, even a six years, you know, do we want to be here in the future is we have to make these decisions now. So bravo to you. You've made some other decisions or, or philosophies, or you have uh, thoughts on how on growing your business. And I laughed. And one of the reasons I even really wanted to make sure we chatted today was you sent me an email. I said something about growth and, you know, I said, Oh, how are things going? I was doing a check-in with you and you said, Oh, you're going to, you're going to be mad at me or something. Cause we're not, we're not planning on a lot of huge growth. Yeah. Can you speak to that? Cause that's not what I'm about either. I'm about big enough. And I think big enough is what we want. So can you speak a little bit to that train of thought and that conversation uh, or how that went? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how it really came about. I think it had to do with, at one point, we were trying to make a decision. Well, my husband briefly retired and was going to come on board with me full time here at the store. And in order to do that, we would have had to really, you know, ramp up the business, increase our revenue, add all these things, maybe do website sales, which we have a little bit of uh, already, but ramp all that up. And ultimately, he decided it wasn't the right decision for him, not so much because of working at the store, but he, he went back to the company he'd been with, which was great. Uh, so I thought, you know, I can either, I can go down one of two paths. Yeah. I can just keep trying to grow it, grow it, grow it, or I can make it a size that's comfortable for me where 
I'm taking into account my quality of life. And so I made the decision and it, it was in conjunction with simplifying the menu. I scaled back on my payroll. My payroll was getting like out of control. At one point I had like 11 or 12 employees and there'd be six of us working at a time. And it was just like, we're working, working, working. Sales are growing, growing, growing. But that did not mean that our profits were growing. Yes. So, so by like simplifying and amplifying, which is a total Wendy thing that you taught me, we were like, let's just scale it back. And so right now I'm like having the best time ever. Seven years in, I'm working probably 30 hours a week. I have been working like everybody else, 50 to 60, you know, this time last year, even on all through. And I know that'll get busy fourth quarter, third and fourth quarter, but I've managed to scale it back to where I can take so much time for myself to do the things that I want to do. And that helps me think big picture about the business too. I've definitely learned to trust my employees more and they totally deserve it. I've got a great team. They don't need me hanging over their shoulder. They probably prefer it when I don't. Yeah. So as long as I keep the connection with my customers, that's the key thing because, you know, they know me as the owner of the business and they like to chat with me. And even if I'm over there working, I'm, most of the time I'm actually really just chatting with customers as opposed to like doing the grunt work of making the drinks and stuff. And that's, that's great. They like to see that. They like to chat. So it was a huge change for me this year to do that and to be like, I want this to be a small business. And honestly, our numbers are slightly down this year over this period last year. But like I said, I'm working about half the amount of time and my payroll and food costs are down too. So my, my profit margin is higher. Right. So I, I think that's, a win. that's such a great, like I had got goosebumps when you said that, because that is what it's all about. It's about quality of life, whether you want a top, a top line revenue means nothing if the yeah. bottom line is not. So how many people are out there like hustle, 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 more money. And, you know, like we need more, we need to do more. We need, to, you know, we need to do more to get more people in the door to make more money. But at the end of the day, are we, are you doing what you love? Are you still enjoying it? And are you making a profit? Those are the important things, right? Simplifying and amplifying. So I love that you're doing that. I see, um, well, do you want to tell us what are the th some of the things I've, I've seen? What fills your cup when you're not, what are the, what are you doing with those extra 30 hours? Well, I <laughs> yeah. I, I think I'm what they, what do they call like an introverted extrovert or an extroverted yeah. introvert? I don't know, but I love chatting with customers. I'm yeah. super social when I'm at the store and then I want to just be by myself right? You know, or with my husband. And so I like to, we have a little creek that runs behind our house and behind the store. And I literally like to go down there and like stick a chair in the creek with a book. And that's <laughs> like, <laughs> my, cousin, my employees are like heading to the creek, three o'clock, see ya. So like, yeah, that and taking walks and riding my bike and just hanging out with friends. But I'm not, you know, we're, we're stay at homes. My husband and I are very quiet. Uh, we like our quiet time at home, just hanging out on our back porch, watching the birds or whatever, like. That's my way to fill my cup is with nature and quiet. That's, that's incredible. I, I, I'm so glad you have time to do that now too, right? So I'm glad that you made that decision. And um, I think it would have burned out if I hadn't. That's the problem. That, I had to do it. That's what happens. That's what, and I know we've all been busy over the last couple of years. It's been a weird couple of years. Yeah. And, but that is exactly what happens if we're always on this forward um, need more, 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 uh, more, more revenue. And I, I think we have to all stop and what is it we want? Why did we build this business? Why are we starting? So I know from, you know, from what you've said today and from what you've shared and from conversations and from working with you that you're like, your people mean a lot to you, the gathering. So I love that you have, um, I used to call, I used to call it on my schedule in my shop because I was that person too. Uh, I, loved I used to we used to call it Wendy was on chat duty and it was a kind of a joke amongst my team but what it meant was I wasn't responsible for teaching workshops or that day or I wasn't going to be at the cash or I wasn't you know I wasn't on the floor per se but I was on the floor you know yeah. so I was the extra body because that's what people wanted they, again they want I wanted to keep my hand on the thing on so even once I started full-time coaching I found it really hard um 
to be in the shop when I was doing the grunt work and I hate calling it grunt work, but you and I both, know, we all know, we all know what we're talking about. If you're on the cash or you're on, you know, you can't linger and chat as much. So I love that you're able to do that. Cause I know that was important to you. You've created the space that you want it to with your, your vision. I want to say mm-hmm. of redoing this beautiful and everybody has got to just go check you out. I'll, I'll make sure we have all your links, but you've created a beautiful Take, taken that whole old historic building, turned it into something beautiful and did that space that I know you were dreaming about at the, you know, at the beginning. So, and you're getting your quality of lifetime, right? So yes. doing what fills your cup. Yeah. I, I think we're all on a fast track to burnout if we don't acknowledge that or identify what is big enough. And I, and I call it big enough. I don't know if that even makes sense to everybody else, but like the big enough number is a paycheck time, you know, running a happy business, <laughs> happy, happy business, right. Or we will burn out. So, so thank you for sharing that. I really, I really love, um, I love that you share that we can't be in the grind all the time. Mm-hmm. It's impossible. And also yay you for trusting your staff. That is a big step for a lot of us to find the right people to be on our team and understand our culture, but also to let it go and, you know, and trust that we've done a good job with our culture training and that they're going to treat our people the way, way they should. And they're going to do the things trust is a, 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 an important part of it, isn't it? Yeah. Finding the right people is key. I mean, I've had a lot of employees over the years and right now I just have like the dream team, but it is, it has to be the person who's the right fit for the vibe that you have. Like, for example, I have a new employee who also has a job at a pizza shop. And she's been great. She's working out terrific. But when she first started, she was like rushing everybody through the transaction like super fast. And I had to talk to her and say, that's how it works at the pizza shop because they're just trying to move you through. And I'm like, our vibe is we chat with our customers. We take our time. We're super friendly. We get to know them, you know, have a little conversation. And I said, even if there's somebody standing behind that person, they're not coming to our place to grab a quick coffee and get out the door. They're coming to like enjoy their time and relax. And nobody comes to us to like, you know, (laughs) grab a lunch on their lunch hour. Like they're coming to hang out. And so she had to adjust for our store because it's just a different vibe, but our, our, our employees get that. And so they, you know, they're, they've become really good at that. Yeah. And we lead by example right? So you're leading. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. it, that's a, that's a great point though, to point out because just because somebody knows how to work with cash and they're friendly and they're outgoing, we yeah. still like we, you know, and they can learn the technical stuff. We still need to teach them the culture. The culture yeah. is really important. And I, you know, I, I share this a lot. The culture means this is how we do things around here. <laughs> like people get sort of tied up in the word culture, but it's like, really just take that out and put, this is how we do things around here. <laughs> This might, you know, it's the easiest way to do it. And you do things so beautifully around your shop. If we could share one thing. So everybody who's like drifted off on the (laughs) the podcast, we could bring them back right now and share one takeaway, one thing you want people to remember or think about uh, an action step that they could do in their business to sort of create this sort of Zen vibe you've got going on or big enough business. Um, What would would you share with retailers? Well, I think you have to really love what you're doing. And obviously all of your people do or else they wouldn't be doing it. Yes. Um, And so it's that, that human connection with your customers. Like we're making connections with people. We've created a gathering place to welcome people. And it's almost like a community hub. It's taking the place of, you know, what maybe a, a church years ago was, or a community center or something like we're kind of that sort of place but everybody's business is different like that's that's what I've created because I felt that there was a void in our community like we live in in the middle of nowhere but our larger town is all suburbs and strip malls very few independently owned places and nothing with outdoor seating like we have so I I lost track what was your question well just like what like an an idea of I, well, I, I think what you're, what you're saying is, you know, really understand what it is you're trying to provide to your customers right? right. and really understand what they need. Right. So and I mean, understand and also avoid burnout because I've been there where it's like, oh my God, here comes a whole line of customers. And I'm just like stressed instead of enjoying the fact that, wow, we have a whole line of customers. This is amazing. 
So, you know, an important thing is to make sure you kind of take time to yourself so that you remember why you love what you're doing. And it doesn't just become like, oh, because customers will pick up. I've been there where I've been stressed yes. out and tired. Yeah. yeah. And my customers can pick right up on that vibe and they see it. And, you know, they want to see somebody who's happy because it makes them happy. Energy is so, palatable, it, isn't it? It's, it's, the it's the energy and the vibe that you're putting off. And sometimes I'll, you know, even still now I'll get tired. It's been a long day or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I'll have to step away from the register and I'll be like, okay, you get the register. I'm going to be on yeah. drinks for a while. Cause I like literally don't have the mental energy to like be as friendly and keep the conversations going. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, we might have the culture in place and I might really be the leader of it, but today is not the day. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's like, know your limits. Every, nobody can do it all. And you always yeah. say like, you need employees. And if you think you don't, you do, you, or if you think you can afford employees, employees are what's going to help get your business to the next level. When I opened, I thought, it, you know, it was just going to be me and one other person. And now I've got, there's no way. Yeah. Um, so get help. Hey. Yeah, it's important to have people. We can't be, we're not super women or super men, right? right? So right. we have to have people. It is, yeah, I don't know any business that's grown without people. Like there's right. just no such thing as a successful business without people. Mm -hmm. I've also, um, one thing I, I also have seen you do beautifully uh, besides build all, you know, all of this and, and just to add to something I think that maybe you've even forgotten that you, that was not easy is self um, like learning and, you know, educating yourself. And yeah, I actually remember a conversation with you about <laughs> Facebook lives and, you know, you were like, I said, you have to show your shop and you're like, I'm not doing that, you know, and then but we have to get, we have to do uncomfortable things, learn yeah. new things, yeah. step into, you know, step into new things. And, and, and I think that's the only way to get the ease too. And I've, I've just watched you do that really well. So um, Thank you. I wanted to mention that as well too. You, you're, you're always open again, some things work, some things don't for us. Right. So, yeah, but we have I'm to try, I am willing to try anything. And my philosophy is that it's my business and it can be whatever I want it to be. And it's taken me a while to get there. You know, I used to listen to people, well, you're going to need to do this. You're going to need to do that. And I have enough self-confidence at this point in having run it that I, I trust my own instincts. I run it the way I would want to see it as a customer. And my people will come and there are customers we get through the door who it's not really their vibe. We're looking for, you know, every, every once in a while, somebody wants to get a bagel with cream cheese. I'm like, well, we have a very limited menu. That's not what we sell. And that they're not our people, like our people have found us and they tell their friends and it's it has spread through word of mouth. And I think you just have to be confident in what you're creating and be true to your vision and the right people will find you. Wow, that's beautiful. Well, we'll end up on that then. So thank you so much for your time. Where can we send people? What's the best place for us to send people? Uh, the website is visherferryjeneralstore.com, spells like my t-shirt, B-I-S-H-E-R. <laughs> And uh, same on Instagram and Facebook, Fisher Fairy General Store. Yeah. And we'll have all of that in the show notes. Last question, what's what's up next or what are you most looking forward to for this coming season? In well, Fisher Fairy I'm getting what, what are you excited, about? excited for figuring out our theme for this holiday season. And yeah. I'm starting to, you know, I've been really enjoying my summer time and having lots of fun, but I'm also in the back of my mind thinking, okay, I need to like <laughs> have some planning sessions and think about fall, fall and winter are both huge for us. Fall is huge. We're in an apple picking area. Yes. Um, we're like quintessential Northeast, like people love to come to our kind of place during the fall. So I have kind of laid off all the special events and all that stuff for the summer, but they'll be back in full force for fall and winter. So yeah. Just starting to plan all that fun stuff. We'll be jumping into the holiday boot camp, as you know, in the inner circle. So yeah, I was going to say, we'll, we'll be getting you get, getting you organized and getting ready to go. So uh, I'm going to shout out to you on uh, and to everybody to go follow, especially through the holidays last fall and into the holidays. Your it was just beautiful. It was magical. All of the things you did. I mean, you had somebody I watched somebody like. You did a great job on somebody was decorating your front of your shop and you were sharing that on Instagram and I was following and I'm like, oh, what are they doing today? How are the, how far along are they? It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that all goes to the feeling, right? The emotional connection that we make with our customers. And part of that is you just provide a beautiful visual 
feeling and makes me want to open my wallet and spend some money, right? So because yeah. <laughs> you're all expecting to- something big this year, so I have to. Uh- come up with something. Yeah, it looks beautiful. You do a wonderful job. Thank you so much, Louise, for your time and sharing all of this great information with all our retailers. I'm sure there's some big nuggets for so many people and everybody jump on over and follow Louise at Fisher Ferry General. So thank you, Louise. Thanks, Wendy. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. Make sure you join our Rockstar Creatives Facebook group. We will continue the conversation over there weekly. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week.